I'm going to go through in this video the pros and cons of living and moving to Provo, Utah. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about my story too, because I am a perfect example of someone who decided to move to Provo, Utah. I absolutely love Provo. I have lived here, so a little on my cheat sheet here, I have lived here twice in the 80s, but I've been living in Florida for 27 years, and I moved back to Provo, Utah about two years ago. I absolutely love it. I chose to live above one of the cons, which is winter inversion. I live in the mountains, in the hills. It's called the Each Bench of Provo and in the Indian Hills community. And I absolutely love it. I think if I raise up my camera here, you can even see the mountains practically in my backyard. It's so beautiful there, right? That is my favorite part about living in Provo, Utah, is the mountains, the scenery. Everywhere you walk, you're just surrounded with mountains. It's just gorgeous. I live about 10 minutes from Bridal Veil Falls, which is an amazing landmark in the Provo Canyon. So just to go down the canyon, I only have to go down one road and make a right, and I'm in the canyon. Absolutely to die for scenery, hiking, parks, just everything. If you love to ski, again, another pro is if you love outdoor sports. Provo is known for their outdoor sports. We absolutely love you to come here and visit us. We get so many tourists coming here every year to enjoy the beautiful outdoors in Provo and in the Provo Canyon and all around the Wasatch Mountain Front. We absolutely love to. So there's snowboarding, skiing, skating, all of these awesome things in the winter. And in the summer, people love to go ATVing, boating on the lakes, fishing in the river, swimming. There's just so many fun things to do. In Provo, another pro is that it is such a community friendly environment. I know all my neighbors. We all talk to each other. You'll be walking by a street after garbage has been picked up on a garbage day, and you will see neighbors bringing in other neighbors' garbage cans. It is incredible. When I moved in here, every day, there was at least one to two people in my neighborhood knocking on my door, welcoming to the neighborhood, bringing me things to eat, bringing me goodies, gifts, asking me how they could help. It was an amazing experience. And still to this day, two years later, because I'm reconstructing an entire house and you can follow that journey on a different channel. But anyway, I still to this day have people coming and helping me move the heavy things, bring heavy drywall up the stairs and OSB wood and things like that. The community involvement is amazing here. It's so friendly. The next thing is the education. And this is whether you are in school, as if you have children in public school, if you're going to private schools, or if you're a college student, we have Brigham Young University right here in our backyard, less than five minutes from my home. And we also have Utah Valley University in Orem, which is right down the street from us too. It's maybe at the most 10 minutes away from my home. So in between all of this, we have thousands and thousands of college university students and it just makes for a very bright, vibrant community. I love that. And then I love the older people that are professors and retired doctors and professors and people like that who have so much wisdom to share with all of us. I just absolutely love it. The other thing about the education is the public school system is very good here. The private schools, plenty of them for you to choose from of all kinds that you would like. But more important than all of that is if you're not in school anymore, you're like me and you just want to learn things. We have BYU Education Week once a year. We have women's conferences, youth conferences, and BYU puts on all kinds of free devotionals, educational forums, all kinds of things. There's so much to do, which brings me to the next pro, which is the events. You cannot be bored living here in Provo. If you're bored, then you need to come talk to me or go to our website, movetoprovoutah.com. We list all the events that are going on every week here in Provo and in Orem, and sometimes a little further out, depending on what the event is and how popular it is. But you can go there. There's a calendar on there of all the events, and you click on anything on that calendar. It'll open up to a description of that event. Make sure you go there and subscribe to the calendar and subscribe to my email list that will keep you informed of the different events. So you can never be bored. There's things to do if you have little children, older children, teenage children, if you're single, if you are an older adult, if you are newly married couple, there are things for everybody. And it's just so much fun that you can never be bored. In fact, I can never make it to all the events 
ones because there's just too many of them to go to. This is something that all the other videos that you're watching about the pros and cons of moving to pro are not covering. The next thing is the restaurants. We have a vibrant downtown Provo as well as State Street, Main Street that have a lot of restaurants and a lot of mom and pop and very small franchise places. These places are incredible. Again, on my website, move to ProvoUtah.com, I have an entire section on the restaurants. Every time I go to a restaurant, I take photos and I write a review about it for you so that you can stay up to date with all of the amazing small mom and pop places you can support here in Provo, Utah. That's another pro that I just absolutely think I'm even going off script. I asked, I asked Bard and I asked ChatGTP and I asked just so I wasn't missing anything, but their stuff was boring. <laughs> and I have the experience of living here for almost two years now. So I have so much more to tell you about the wonderful and amazing things about Provo, Utah. So now this can be either a pro or a con, depending on how you think and how you feel. Provo is very conservative. We are very inclusive, but we are still a very conservative. Utah in general is a red state, and we do pride ourselves in our Second Amendment rights and in our freedom of speech and things like that. So sometimes people aren't that comfortable coming to move to Provo if you're not a person who can accept all sides of discussion, I should say. That could be a pro or a con for you. And the next, we'll go into a couple more of the cons. And one of the cons is, and for me, it's a pro. Again, a lot of these cons can be pros or cons, except for the inversion. So the con is the weather. So a lot of people will say it's the weather because it snows. But I love the snow. After living 27 years where the only seasons we had was hot, hurricane, and hotter, I really enjoy living in the mountains and having the seasons. So we have beautiful springs where all the fruit trees blossom and people start planting their amazing gardens. It's just, I love walking around in the neighborhood and seeing everybody's corn and their tomatoes and their squash and their apple trees and apricot trees and cherry trees. And I have a pear tree right behind me there. And those pears are delicious, by the way. Those are, that's our spring and our summer gets too hot for me. So the summer is cooler in June and then in July and August, it gets hot. It can get into your 90s. But the beautiful thing that I love about, especially living higher up in the elevation, is that it cools off in the evenings, which I really enjoy being outside in the evenings. But it can reach into the 90s and I don't like that part. Then we have fall, which is gorgeous. The trees change colors. You see the mountains turning red from when they used to be green. It's so pretty. And then we have our winter, and I absolutely love snow. I love walking it, hiking in it. I walk to church every Sunday when it's snowing. I love the snow falling on my hat, my parka and hoodie, and I just love that. It's just so refreshing. I love cold weather, and so this has been such a blessing for me. The other thing is that some people don't. Another con is if you're moving from California, you might not know how to drive in the snow. If you're moving from an area that doesn't have snow, if you're moving from Idaho, you most likely will feel very comfortable driving in the snow. I was very scared to drive in the snow. I ended up changing my car into a all-weather tires, a special kind of car. And now I can't remember all the names. But in Florida, we didn't need those kind of cars. And so when I moved here, I traded it in to get a Nissan Pathfinder that actually has a snow option on it. So I can drive in the snow, but I usually don't because I live so close to everything that I can just have my groceries delivered to me and I get delivery from Smith's and I get delivery from Costco and I get delivery from Walmart. So I don't have to go anywhere if it's snow and I don't feel like taking the snow off my car. So if you have a garage, of course, you don't have that issue, but then you have to um, shovel your driveway. And sometimes I don't want to do that. So if I don't have to do it, I don't. I live, my house faces the south, so the snow melts very quickly. And that's one of the good things about here. The other thing that I love about the snow in Provo is it doesn't turn that black gross stuff that you get in the Midwest or like in Chicago areas and up north. And down here or in Utah on the west, it doesn't get slushy and gross. It's really powdery snow. And that's why people love to ski in it so much. But also that's a benefit for where we live because the snow plows come and take it off the street and it's not getting all gross. And your roads aren't getting so icy. So for me, it's a pro, but for you, it might be a con. So it's something that you have to think about. Another pro for me is that it's a very religious town. We have a lot of religions here, but the majority, 87% of the population does go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and so do I. So for me, that is a pro that I love being around and going to church with all my neighbors and we all know each other. But if you're not a member, you are more than welcome. We love, we welcome you with open arms. We want you to feel comfortable. 
inclusive. Even if you never step foot inside of one of our chapels, if you're Catholic, there's a Catholic church here. If you are a Seventh-day Adventist, there is a Seventh-day Adventist chapel here. Jehovah Witnesses have a chapel, Lutherans. So no matter what religion you are, you'll find a place and you'll find your people so you can feel comfortable. But for some people, that's a real con and they just don't want to live in a religious town. But the next pro that I love, and we're going back to the diversity of downtown, is they do have a lot of fun things to do there. But the con is we only have, I think, one or two bars, not many, many bars. Utah is a state-controlled liquor state, but most places, like if you go to Salt Lake, you're not going to feel that or see that because even though you have to go to the state liquor store to buy your liquor, you can go to the store and buy beer. That's about the only thing. So they don't even sell wine in the grocery stores here. So at Costco, you can't go and buy your wine. You have to go to the state store for anything over a certain percentage of alcohol. So the only thing that you're going to find in the grocery stores, and in some of them you won't find any, but in most of them you're going to find beer. And at the gas stations, you're going to find beer so that you can pretty much buy freely. But I don't drink and I work with a lot of recovering alcoholics. So it's a great place to come and live if you are a recovering alcoholic because you're not going to be tempted with all these bars and nightclubs and things because we just don't have those. We have what we call dry bars and dry bars is where you go for like comedy club and different things like that, activities, music venues, but they don't serve alcohol. Also, if you go to any of the football games at BYU Stadium, they don't serve alcohol and you can't bring in alcohol. It's prohibited. Brigham Young University is owned by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It's a huge university, very well known. In fact, the athletic teams just made the Big Ten or whatever, Big 12. Yeah, that. they just made it into that this year, or last couple of years. That's been really fun and exciting. And you just can have a lot of fun without the alcohol. So that is a con if you're a person who wants to have host a lot of drinking parties or you're really you're on the dating scene and you want to go and hang out and meet people at bars, that's not so much what's going to happen in Provo. You would need to go like to Salt Lake and other Draper, Salt Lake, West Jordan, places like that to get more of that nightclub and drinking scene. So as you see, all of these things can either be a pro or a con. Now, the one con there is for moving here is we do have a thing called inversion. And so it's like pollution. And it happens mostly in the winter and it happens mostly in the valley. Now, I chose to live above the valley. So again, I live in the hills. So even in the winter, I don't get inversion. I think the whole time I've lived here, I might have seen inversion one time. When I go down into the city, then yes, I'm going to see it once in a while, but not a lot. Nothing compared to Las Vegas, which I just came back from visiting for a week. The inversion there is really bad. But anyway, so I live up in the mountains and I have the bluest of skies. I've never seen such blue skies in my entire life. In fact, I still, two years later, keep taking pictures and I post them on my Instagram and my Facebook of the beautiful skies that we have here. If you like this video, please comment below. I am a real estate agent. Me and my son, Tristan Gassat, are real estate agents. We belong to EXP Realty and we'd love to have you join us on our team if you are a realtor. And if not, if you know anybody who is moving to Provo, Utah, then we would love to help them. My son just earned a bunch of designations to help buyers and sellers. You can really put his education to use for you. I would really appreciate it if you know anybody who's moving to Provo, Utah, that you refer them our way. In the description area is our links to our website, the Move to Provo, Utah site, which does not have any real estate in it. But underneath that link is tristansellsutah.com. And that link will take you to where you can search for a home. I have videos on different neighborhoods, so you can check out more on my channel here. And you can look at the different drone footages we have done of different neighborhoods. And also read more about those neighborhoods on our website, which is utahvalleyrealestate.com. There's a lot of articles about the different neighborhoods, so you can go there as well. Again, we'd love to answer any of your questions. If there's any specific videos you'd like us to do, we would be more than happy to do them about Provo or Utah County. So let us know about that. And hopefully this video has helped you to decide whether you really want to move to Provo or not. Please let me know. Thank you.